This is a radial heat transfer problem where we are in steady state and we're dealing with a, what is typically referred to in the textbooks as something like a thin electric heater. What this is, is this is a source of constant heat flux. So it's a constant heat flux source. Well, that would be for a wall or in the case of a cylindrical object, we'll refer to it as just a source where we're putting in so many watts per unit length of the cylinder. So we have, uh, without reading all the way through this, there is one additional thing that we should point out here, is that this is a problem that has some thermal resistance. So this is the text by Incorpira, so R is for resistance, T is for thermal resistance, comma C for contact, and the prime gives us the fact that it's a resistance that's specified per unit length of the pipe. So to look at a diagram of the, pro of the uh, problem itself, we have a pipe with a specified thermal conductivity. In this case, they're telling us the thermal conductivity of the material is 10 watts per meter per Kelvin. And we're told that this uh, cylinder of material has a thin electric heater that's wrapped around it that is being maintained at a temperature of 25 degrees C. Now, we're also told that the interior of the pipe is being maintained at a surface temperature, Ts comma I, of five degrees. So we note that the interior of the pipe has is gonna be a temperature less than the heater. So we're expecting a certain amount of heat from the heater to move into the interior of the pipe. So we could call that Q, let me give myself some more room to write this. This is going to be Q, R prime, and we'll write this as N. Now, we're also told that there is a convective environment outside the pipe, and this has a temperature of minus 10 degrees, which is also less than the 25 degree temperature of the heater. So in this case, we would again expect heat to move out from the heater into the convective environment, and we can call this Q R prime out. So this problem is eventually going to ask us what is the total power output per unit length of the heater, and we'll find this by saying, well, the Q R prime, I'll call it total, is going to have to equal the sum of the heat energy that moves in plus the amount of heat energy that moves outward from the heater. Uh, we are also given most of the other uh, geometric information. We have both the radiuses. We're told that we have a set of thermal contact resistance and we have the convective environment information, so T infinity and H. So if we proceed and we look at this problem in terms of a thermal circuit, which I have sketched here, we can see that we have heat moving towards the inner portion of the pipe from the heater, which we're going to call TO, and we'll call this inward. And we also have heat moving outward. So the QR is a source term that's in the middle of my circuit. And I have energy, as being shown here, moving in two directions. Now once this has been specified, we realize that we have how many unknowns are the things that we're looking for? Well, we are being asked for QR, but QR is made up of two unknowns. So I'm going to need to solve for those in order to uh, obtain the answer for this problem. So to do that, we need to take a look at what these thermal resistances are 
between these two different temperatures because I have the inside temperature as being specified as 5 degrees C. The heater is specified at 25 degrees C. Same thing over here. And we have an outer temperature, remind, remind myself, it's minus 10 degrees C. So I have the uh, temperature potential difference that's going to drive the energy. So I can write down my two equations. But first I need to specify what these resistances are that I've just have labeled A and B. Well, B is the easier one to write because it is just a convective uh, term. And we, the convection is happening at the outer radius, so R2. So it's going to be 1 over 2 pi R2 times H. So that's B. A, it's not very complicated, but it combines two terms. It combines the convective term, the conductive term rather, plus the contact resistance. Now the way we're looking at contact resistance here is it's just an added in resistance term. We're not, if I zoom back in here for the picture, we're not looking at a temperature difference or temperature forming on either side of the thermal resistance term. So if it was a convective term or a straight conduction term, we'd be looking at a driving potential across this resistance. But right now, it's just going to be a resistance that's added in series to the conductive term. So the conductive term is going to be ln of R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi times the K of the material. And to this, we're just going to add in the thermal contact resistance. At this point, we really should check that our units are going to work out. Well, it, it's pretty straightforward here because the upper term on the left-hand side is non-dimensional. So the only dimensions here are in the denominator that have the units of watts per meter per Kelvin. And if we looked at, and so we're going to inverse this because it's in the denominator. So this term, the units are meters, Kelvin, per watts, and those are exactly the, the units that we are given for the thermal contact, or the contact resistance, rather. So let me put a quick little box around this just to specify what it is that we are referring to as being A. All right. So once we have this, we really just need to write out our two terms. So QR in is going to equal the temperature difference. So it's going to be T naught minus T surface inner divided by the thermal resistance. In this case, the conductive term plus the contact resistance term. And QR out. Is again equal to a temperature difference, in this case T naught minus the T infinity, and the resistive term is just the convective resistance, which is 1 over 2 pi R2H. So we have our two equations. Everything on the right hand side of both of these terms are specified, so just by putting in our values, we can get QR in and QR out. Now, both of these are going to be positive terms, as they should be, because I'm just looking for their magnitudes. And even though one of these terms, Q in, is going to go inward towards the negative R direction, and one is going to go out towards the positive R direction, we're not going to assign any 
um, vector signs to them because we're just looking at how much energy or what's the heat rate that's required to satisfy these terms. All right, so I will leave the math up to you folks, but you do you should see at this point that we have all the information that's required to solve this problem.